it's the last day of March. We haven't recorded a podcast in far, far, far too long. Um, we're coming up on the end of our uh, Utah trip here. We've had some tremendous people visit. We've made some amazing memories. A lot of them right here at the No Name Saloon. Uh, and at High West, my first time out there, which I truly, truly enjoyed. Um, before we get started, we're going to break down everything that happened in the month of March. It was quite expansive. But first and foremost, I have to give a shout out to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today is Easter. If you took the flu game by Michael Jordan, VE Day, walking on the moon with Buzz Aldrin, the Wright Brothers' first day walking, or I'm sorry, flying planes in North Carolina, your home state, and you combine those all into one, that's Easter. He came, he saw, he conquered. Thank you, Jesus, for going ahead and doing that. And if you were going ahead and celebrating today, hope you had a great Easter. April Fool's Day is tomorrow. Any other like big holiday? There, there's no holiday that big, but are there any other holidays we might have missed? I was going to say, uh, once the calendar turns to April in Blacksburg, mm-hmm. you know, it gets really busy down there, whether it's a uh, spring game, 3.2 for 3.32 run in remembrance. You got Relay for Life. You got the big event, and you got better mm-hmm. weather yeah. in Blacksburg. Uh, I always love participating in any type of fun in Blacksburg in April. Uh, and do you should that lead us into baseball? Or well, well, hold on, do you think that I actually want to do a, a poll question right here before we start? And look, this we haven't done this in a while, so it's going to be a fun podcast. It's going to be informative, but we're just letting you know. Do you think that Blacksburg will see snow in the month of April? So this happened to me um, my senior year. I believe it was like around April sixth or April 9th, We saw some uh, some snow. Do you think that we will see snow in Blacksburg in April? Uh, I'm gonna say no. Okay, so just a just a black Blacksburg podcast, uh, Blacksburg weathercast here. They're anywhere from 74 degrees to 31 degrees this uh, this upcoming week. So it's all over the place. But um, as we always do, we will start. I guess we're already two and a half minutes in here with a hokey haiku coming from our guy Pete McGee, who stepped up to the plate. A couple people stepped up to the plate um, this weekend. We had a um, a meanie pants, March meanness. We had some March meanness, uh, but he submitted a haiku. Suns will never leave. Perpetual Saturday, Hokies forever. Perpetual Saturday might be an unbelievable T-shirt. <laughs> really, really would be a great T-shirt. Sign me up for that. Um, but let's do some announcements. I know you got some some stuff on the docket here. First and foremost, if you guys follow on the Instagram, you've probably seen me holding oranges around the mountains over the last few weeks uh, and also juicing up our friends over at Waterman Spirits. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the logo. Um, so these are our friends out in Virginia Beach. If you're a Virginia Beach Hokey, Hampton Roads Hokey, you're probably familiar with Waterman Spirits uh, or Waterman's or just Orange Crushes in general. Uh, but they do make the perfect crush, which is on top of this fridge here. Uh, it's an orange-infused vodka, and uh, we will be drinking it at spring game. Uh, our ask... Responsibly. Responsibly. Our ask from all of you... Uh, first of all, pick up some Virginia uh, Perfect Crush, which is orange-infused vodka, at a Virginia ABC store over the next month or so. I want to see you guys uh, participating at spring game, creating your own orange crushes. It's it's the vodka. It is Sprite, some crushed ice, and it's some fresh squeezed orange. Crush your Saturday with Sons of Saturday and Waterman Spirits. Fired up to work with them. We got some more announcements here. I can jump into Spring Jam. Go ahead. Uh, Friday, April 12th, the ticketing is online, which we're really excited about. First time, saving trees, saving dollar bills, all digital. Digital. Welcome to 2024. So head on over to our website. Check it out. Same place that you get the Nashville hotel tickets. You can get your Spring Jam tickets. Going to be at McLean's, as it has always been. We are inviting Smooth Brain, who's going to play some music for us. David Wilson is going to play some music for us. We're going to have a DJ. David Wilson may be doing a silent auction at this event. And I'm going to float out. I'm not going to say the names, but there are two very notable Virginia Tech quarterbacks. Actually, one, two. There are three extremely notable Virginia Tech quarterbacks who are confirmed going to be there, uh, one of which has not been to Spring Jam before. So look, it's an awesome opportunity to hang out with Hokies from uh, Hokies from our 
long and prestigious history across different sports. Come bowl, come party, come have a drink, come have a laugh. It's all going to happen down at McLean's. That's Friday, April 12th, 8 p.m. Day Check after my birthday. Out. Check it out. It is April 11th, day after my birthday, Aries. So, guys, I don't know if you know this, but Billy Ray is one of the uh, one of the birthday guys. Right. If if anyone mentions April, Billy Ray, oh, oh, birthday month. <laughs> uh, Billy, everyone already knows that it's your birthday month because you've told everyone hundreds of times. Just a reminder: you never so, know if you get a first first time listener. So, <laughs> if you guys see us uh, around town next week, make sure to wish Billy Ray a happy birthday. Please, twenty five. I wish twenty eight. Try for twenty eight. Um, okay, that's April 12th. Uh, on that same day, the Monogram Club is hosting there. For those to come, golf outing uh, to raise scholarships for Virginia Tech Athletics. Check out their website to sign up uh, to play. It's at the River Course on Friday. And We're both bit, playing. It's bit, We are playing. The last time I was at the River Course, I shot like an 186. Yeah, it's uh, it's not at the River – or it, it is at the River Course, uh, moved – Closer to Blacksburg. Uh, previous years, it's been at Roanoke Country Club. Excited to participate as always. Website. I'll let you take that. Yeah, website. Look, a couple of improvements that we've been looking to make. We're talking about a photo gallery. We're talking about the ability to go back in time. And you really need to change the timing on your iPad. Like goes like goes dim every every fifteen seconds. Yeah, you got to go over there and tap it around. Big settings. Um, so we're gonna have a gallery for the photos. We are going to have the ability to function, ability to search old podcasts, old articles. Have profiles for our writers. So you can go and check out everything they've ever written before. What else are we gonna have? We're gonna have sponsorship page. So you can be aware of all the deals that we're running and all of the awesome stuff that you can go get discounts from uh, on stores or different partner affiliate areas. So. A ton, a ton, a ton of really cool improvements um, and also just overall functionality. Making it a place where you're not asked to go, it's a place you want to go. That is sonsofsaturday.com. I think we're going to go live here in the next seven to 10 days. So really, really excited about that. Um, last thing, want to talk about Nashville? Nashville, uh, we've sold out the block of hotels at the Hyatt House and we've sold out the Grand Hyatt. We do have some rooms left at the Thompson Nashville. So if you have not booked your Nashville hotel yet for Virginia Tech versus Vanderbilt Labor Day weekend, uh, make sure to check out our website. Same site that we're selling the Spring Jam tickets on. Um, if you know anyone going to Nashville, if you know anything going on in Nashville that you think we should be involved with, please let us know. Any suggestions? We are welcoming. So we've delayed this for eight minutes. Because, look, March was a tough month. It, it, it felt like I was just – perpetually getting punched in the face with uh with news here um as we always do we're going to start this with some uh with some positive news uh i think the first place that we can start i guess we'll save the i don't want to say best for last but we'll save the probably most historic thing that happened sure. for last year uh first and foremost our baseball team is bleeping awesome they are fantastic they're knocking the cover off of the ball currently ranked 13th in the country they sit 18 and 4 they are tied for first place on our side of the ACC with North Carolina. We have four games coming up against Wake Forest, who may be, one, may be the most talented team in baseball. They are coming to Blacksburg for four games starting on April 5th. That is going to be a tremendous measuring stick. For so you're telling me team. the rubber is going to hit the road? The rubber is absolutely going to hit the road. So if you're in Blacksburg and you have the opportunity, I love this about Coach Chef. He always he always tweets out after a big uh, after a big series win. He'll be like, the fans were awesome. Please keep coming out. Bib, <laughs> build it in Blacksburg. Um, so go out, support the boys. Really, really big uh, opportunity for Virginia Tech there to uh, gain some more ground in the ACC there and see how good we are. Uh, also, our softball team currently ranked 11th in the country. They sit at 25, 5, and 1. They did lose three in a row to Duke on the road, but have a chance to make up for it with a long stretch of ACC games. Duke is fantastic. I think they're ranked number five in the country right now, um, but we did end up uh, losing that series. Team's really good. I also, I can't, you know, not breaking news, I'm not a softball like uh, um, genius. I don't know everything about softball. How many games do they play? 25, 5, and 1. Are they going to play 50 games, 70 games? That is certainly what it looks like. But um, I do know they're good, and I do know they hit the ball really far, and they've been good for some time. So continue to support the baseball team, continue to support the softball team, and 
This is a big one. Shout out to Southwest Virginia shop, Mattsburg. Got oh, some, uh, got some, got some updates from the Matt. Sophomore Caleb Henson brought home the hardware last week from Kansas City at Nationals. Um, just when you think of Caleb Henson, I think everyone just think this guy is a dog. This yeah. guy is a savage. Mm-hmm. Uh, won the 149 pounds uh national champion second ever national champion in virginia tech wrestling history obviously makai lewis uh would be the first caleb beat the number one number six and number seven seed on his way to Mm -hmm. winning the championship finished the year with a 30 and two record Uh, but in the finals he defeated austin gomez of michigan um just watching highlights and and seeing people so fired up about this but um it reminds me a lot of uh like one of the coolest things about again i don't know a ton about wrestling um but i always try to follow as much as i possibly can and text kyle berkner for you know hey what does this mean how does this work explain scoring to me rich luttenberger is also super helpful there the coolest thing about this that reminded me of when mckay won is how many eyeballs are on it and how well of a job uh daniel cormier and that entire group does covering it um, from just like a, a spectacle perspective. You saw his team run out there. You saw the quotes after um, the interviews after. Like it's just really, really well done, and it's really cool to see Virginia Tech take center stage uh, on a national stage like that. Um, so you know, shout out to him. Shout out to the entire team. Um, what what an accomplishment! Hit the body lock on Gomez. Um, know that several folks in the wrestling community were saying it was one of the best takedowns of the entire uh, NCAAs love that he beat Michigan in the finals. I know you don't, do you have any hatred for Michigan? Like I don't, I don't hate, I don't hate Michigan. I don't, I don't love Michigan. I have a lot of friends who went to Michigan, uh, played at Michigan and coached at Michigan. I do know that that was not a great day to be a Michigan Wolverine though. I do know it that. was not a great day to be a Michigan Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but the content, the quotes, uh, just the memory in general. Um, a few quotes that stuck out. I even saw some from last year that uh, were resurfaced this year. Um, but Caleb Henson is always waking up feeling dangerous. You know, that's a Baker Mayfield mm-hmm. ism. Uh, dropping some f bombs in the post win interview. Hey, you won a national championship. You can say whatever the f you want. <laughs> I got to tell you, I think it's got to be so difficult to literally basically fist fight another human being and then win and then be asked to use words like wonderful, fantastic, Beautiful. Uh, elating. Um, you know, I can understand having a bit of a spicy vocabulary after you, you know, exchange a, a primal interaction with a, another human being and winning. It's a physical sport. It is. Uh, shout out to hunker down Hokey. I know Caleb, when Caleb was a freshman all American last year and he had won ACC's hunker down Hokey. Put out on Twitter, hey, remember the name Caleb Hemson. And sure enough, a year later, he's standing at the top of the podium. Well done. Um, saw some cool clips from Kansas City. Uh, they played Enter Salmon in the arena. All the Hokie fans were getting after it. Uh, I know Seth Carlton was up there going crazy. But, yeah, shout out to Coach yeah. Roby, Coach Fryer, uh, Ethan Aguigui, Tucker Davidson, all the guys up there who just work relentlessly, yeah. whether it's in the wrestling facility at the uh, SERTC, enjoy the W. Uh, I know Caleb also qualifies for Olympic trials, which is massive. But I uh, want to give a plug as well to the Southeast Regional Training Center. Uh, that's www.southeast-rtc.com. That is essentially the NIL funnel for Virginia Tech's wrestling program. Uh, Coach Roby came on the pod a couple of months ago and, and walked through the Southeast RTC, but uh, want to make sure that if you guys want to see Virginia tech wrestling uh, continue to climb, um, make sure to contribute to the SERTC. So we've delayed it. Here we are. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm usually not a guy that gets, that gets pimples, but it's been- I was going to say, you were talking the other day about getting a pimple and I, I know. Started. Well, March has been really trying. It's been a really trying month. It's been a tough and, week. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say these names. And obviously, there's a hint of of uh, sadness that comes with this, but I, I really, you know, hope and think that everyone understands kind of what all of these student athletes have accomplished um, and this coach has accomplished at Virginia Tech over their tenure. 
Uh, the names, as far as they go, Liz Kitley, she's the best player in program history. So she's probably a top three player in ACC women's basketball. Georgia Amor, program embracer, one of the best point guards in the country, an All-American, um, just a tremendous human being. Kayla King, one of, if not the best three-point shooter in program history. She's played more games than anybody in Hokies women's basketball history. Um, Hunter Couture, program leader in three points made, uh, program leader in starts, ACC champion, ACC tournament champion. We were literally talking about it today, watching DJ Burns uh, sending Coach Shire home, and we said, wow, he must have caught the, the Hunter Couture flu, just beating up on Duke, no problem. Uh, and sending them packing. Makai Lewis, national champion, four-time ACC champion. And then Kenny Brooks, one of the best coaches ever in Virginia Tech. I, I have him on my personal Mount Rushmore. All of those folks, their Virginia Tech career is over. Uh, it all happened within, you know, what, five, 15 days, uh, days of each other. Mm -hmm. Can you remember a year? I know we didn't prepare this, but can you remember a year where that many – impactful careers across different sports came to a close and in, in that rapid succession. The only other one that I can possibly think of all silos within men's basketball with J Rob and Ahmed Hill and uh, Kerry Blackshear, Buzz Williams. I can't really think of another time where we had that many, not just great players, but great people like every single one of those folks on this list we have interviewed um, had the opportunity to meet a lot of their families at a lot of these games. They really were not just great players, but they embraced Virginia Tech in such a special way that their career success was synonymous with how much Virginia Tech loved them back. Yeah, I think, uh, well, first of all, you look at Liz and Georgia that I saw Pry Nose Ball put this on the timeline last week. They said, my parents grew up with Shaq and Kobe. I grew up with Liz and Georgia. Mm -hmm. And honestly, <laughs> like that's not very far from the truth here from what we saw over the past few years in Castle. Um, you know, going off of the the comment there uh, with Ahmed Hill and, and Buzz and, and J-Rob and that group, I think you, you kind of got to bring it back to like maybe 2010. Um, with like Tyrod and I just know like that um, that senior class won a ton of football games. They won the ACC in 2007, 2008, 2010, 2011. We were still great at football, you know, got an at large bid to the sugar bowl, but there was no conference championship involved, different quarterback, um, you know, kind of a, a different class there. But um, yeah, you know, we'll have to, we'll have to kind of dig back in the archives and see who were all the members of that, uh, that senior class. I mean, I mean, you, you're looking at multiple Hall of Famers, multiple, probably the best that have ever played in the program ever. Um, just a tremendous group. And, uh, you know, we would spend the next hour listing off their accomplishments. Um, but I, I could not be more thankful um, for what they did for Virginia Tech. Now, this next part, we're going to have a little bit of a nuanced conversation. Um, and I'm going to let you go ahead and uh, set the table here. Yeah, I think, you know. The last week has been chaos. The last month has been chaos. February 25th is when Virginia Tech, for the first time ever, hosts uh, College Games Day on a Sunday morning. We got Carolina coming to town. We got Senior Day. I'm in Florida. Billy Ray and Ed are in the building, and we you know, get a nice convincing win, win over Carolina. And real quick, well on our way to winning the ACC. I was about to say, real quick, after that game, I don't want to say it was a foregone conclusion. Everybody was like, okay, Groundhog Day, Virginia Tech at worst is going to have a two seed in the NCAA tournament. Let's just figure out a way not to be in South Carolina's bracket, and it's going to be a march to the Final Four. I hope we, I hope we see Caitlin Clark. I hope we see Angel Reese. And I can't wait to wreak havoc on women's basketball for the next month. Leaving the building, that was that was the expectation, and nobody thought any differently. Sorry to interrupt. Everyone's wearing their Castle Guard cowboy hats with the orange George Amore glasses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think thousands of dollars in sales yeah. to Walmart over the course of yeah. February, uh, without a doubt. And then we get out here, and day one. 
day one, we we we'd show up on Sunday, mind you, you know, for the for the uh, for the peanut gallery, Pat and Billy are skiing. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's gone to shit since they went skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Take a walk down memory lane. The last two times we came out here during March, we won an ACC championship right. both times. We did win an ACC championship too this time, just a regular season. We did, yeah. So That's we're three true. for three on ACC championship. I guess you're right. So, so um, yeah, our, our first day out here in Utah, um, you know, lose to Notre Dame first. Yeah. Then you go to Virginia, which, by the way, Notre Dame game we just didn't have our stuff. Didn't have our stuff. Notre Dame was a really good team. Ran into a buzzsaw. You go to Virginia. It's literally a home game. Um, tremendous show, sh crowd. Uh, and I, it's a close game, close game. You have the Liz injury. Devastating. And pick it up from there. I mean, I mean that was kind of it. Yeah. you that get was kind of it. The, all of the air is taken out of the balloon. Um, and look, I, I want to tip my cap to Tech for playing really well against a good Marshall team. Um, that's tough to prepare for having to completely reinvent themselves on the fly. Uh, it's been a complete pleasure watching Clara Strack play, watching some of the youngsters play, um, watching all of that come together. And then Virginia Tech wins a very competitive game against Baylor, who, um, Loses. you know, is a couple points away. They almost won, they almost ended up winning that game against USC. So it just, I can't think of a time. In any of my fandom with any program, professional team, anything, where you are so, so, so high, and then in two weeks, it eva it completely evaporates. Kenny's gone. George is gone. Kayla's gone. Liz is gone. The season's over. And it ends in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Tough. Driving a Ferrari. Cruising to have like what, what if you're driving down the Pacific Coast Highway in a Ferrari, what music do you have on and who's in the passenger seat? Uh, I'm probably uh, I'm probably by myself and I'm listening to I'm probably listening to some hippie type music. But for the sake of this argument, I'll, I'll make it uh, more than a feeling by Boston. OK, more than a feeling yeah. by Boston is playing. All of a sudden, the radio starts to crap out and you're like, hey, what's going on with the radio? You reach over to to fix the radio and eyes off the road, drive straight through mm. a guardrail into the ocean, and uh, that was what happened to us. Yeah. Um, and again, it wasn't it wasn't falling apart due to coaching, playing, or anything else. You were handed the worst possible hand that you could possibly be handed, and it's not only the effect that it has on you on what you can run, what the matchups are. Like I can't imagine being a player, a coach, an assistant, an, a, a, a team doctor. And going through that and then having to then go prepare for the rest of the season. Um, I mean, it's it's an about, impossible task. How about just like storylines that had to kind of live in the shadows too. Like Georgia going off against UVA mm -hmm. for 34, 30, 38. Yeah. I, I don't remember. It was a lot. It's like 39 points. 39. I think it was 39 points. And then she went off against Miami too. All American. She tournament. gets All America honors. Yeah. Um, um, Clara Strack just becoming – Awesome. Becoming her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was really fun to watch. And yeah, you know, just just a bummer to see it all unfold here. Um, but yeah, you know, I think this this timeline really <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna be that uh that naysaying hokey fan, but mm -hmm. uh, it definitely, you know, um it hurt a lot. Yeah. Um, but as far as just high level and you know, kind of talking about the facts with Everything about Coach Brooks leaving, um, knowing that he came to Virginia Tech, you know, multiple times mentioned it being his dream job. But, you know, knowing the landscape of college athletics has been changing over the last few years, you know, SEC, Big Ten, it, it it's obvious, right? Um, Virginia Tech is going to be need, going to need to be in a position where we are not left behind uh, in any capacity. Now, I think what some fans are definitely griping about is the fact that, you know, coach Brooks had a program that he built from the ground and people really, really, really embraced him. And Virginia tech fans became Virginia tech women's basketball, super fans. Yeah. You saw castle full. Mm -hmm. We went, to, we went, I mean, how many games did you go to this year? I probably went to six or eight games and they were sold out four times, four yeah. or five times for them. 
Uh, it was unbelievable. The fans showed up. Um, you know, Kenny wanted them to show up, and they showed up, and you know, it was a magical run. And I think, you know, there's objectively speaking, there's no. Um, I think there's no issue with fans having an issue with Kenny and the way that he left Virginia Tech. Um, you know, I think understanding it was a business decision, completely understand that. But, um, you know, this was a fan base that really, really, really embraced him. And just the fact that there's been no public acknowledgement yet uh, has been disappointing uh, to me as a fan. Now, I want to put the fan and the athletic department and whatever's going on, like, you know, these are two exclusive things, uh, but the fan base, I I do believe, you know, deserves some sort of goodbye or some sort of thank you. So at first, I started off. Um, we were talking about this a couple of a uh, couple of days ago, and at the end of the day, a, a a plumber, a businessman, or whoever doesn't have to, you know, send a thank you note to everybody whose toilets he's unclogged over the course of his tenure. With that said. As you mentioned, Virginia Tech as a fan base dove headfirst into what this was. Um, we talked with Kenny a bunch of times. He lobbied to get folks out there. He built the program and everybody bought in, and it was amazing. It was fantastic. On one side of things, I will always love Kenny. I will root for Kenny regardless of where he is. Um, I think he's a tremendous basketball coach, a tremendous mentor to these kids, and a tremendous program builder and leader. I think he's a tremendous person. On the flip side of that, I am surprised at thus far, I think, what did, what did he take the job a week ago? We're about seven days it removed. Was, it was Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday, so we're about six or five days removed. I was a little surprised by that. If you go watch the introductory press conference from Kenny, and granted, this is eight or ten years ago, um, when he came over from JMU, he was obviously an alum. Uh, he spoke at length about the people at JMU, the fan base, his players, et cetera. Um, Fast forward to now is a little bit of a different tone. And I think obviously, again, the landscape of college athletics with the Big Ten and the SEC, ultimately that plays a huge part in this ending up the way that it did. But also the fact that Kentucky has their own women's basketball facility. The fact that Kentucky did give him a raise of about 35%. I have no idea what the if it was countered, what the counter situation was or whatever. Um, so... Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where it is. So I can certainly understand fans being angry. What bothers me about that is one, it doesn't change the accomplishment or the uh, achievements that he achieved that he achieved while he was here. On the flip side of that, I think one of the unintended consequences of this verbiage takes away from the incredible careers that Kayla, Georgia, and Liz all had. The dialogue around the program, whether Kenny took the job or not, is overwhelmingly disappointed, sad, um, and, and crestfallen. That's kind of the overall spirit of Virginia Tech. And this is not just Virginia Tech women's basketball fans. This is all of Virginia Tech because the entire community jumped into it. So I certainly understand it. Uh, it doesn't change how I see Kenny. Uh, I do think it was a little odd. Um, who knows what comes in the future? And then the entire other side of that is how weird is college athletics now where whether Kenny is here or not, five years ago, you're saying, all right, Kenny took a different job. Clara Strack is literally awesome. Okay. Uh, Karis Baker, Carly Wenzel, all these young, young bucks that are coming back. You have no idea what's going to happen with the transfer portal, with NIL, with all of this other stuff. So it just is sad that this is the last page of the book that has been an unbelievable run for four years with these kids, five years with these kids and eight years with Kenny Brooks, but the book's a damn good book in totality. Um, I think that's the only way I, I could talk about this for hours because I, that team, that core, I have said on this podcast multiple times, I don't know if I was ever capable of loving a team more than I loved the 2019 men's basketball team. I think this, I think this was my favorite team. Yeah. It really was. And it wasn't just winning and beating amazing teams consistently. It was how they did it, what their families were like, watching it grow from literally nothing into something. And 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 selfishly and transparently. My least favorite months of doing this are usually between December to April 
because there's nothing to talk about. It has been so fun to talk about that team, and I think that their legacy, as we remove from kind of the cloud and the upsetliness that that came from this, they changed the school forever. Uh, not the women's basketball program, the school forever. That cannot be taken away from Kenny, from Liz, from Georgia, from Kayla, from everybody on that team. Program, school changed forever. That banner is is hanging. Yeah, there'll that be another one that goes hanging. up next year. Uh, so where do we go from here? Well, we'll let you know in a few <laughs> days. No, I, I, no idea. We'll let you know in a few yeah. days. But yeah, I mean, all in all, I I do not blame, I cannot blame him for leaving with, I, I don't have the, the whoa, whoa, what's whoa, that? Whoa, that's probably cool. Whoa, it's StreamYard doing some cool effects here. <laughs> I'm feeling, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, with the way the college sports is going, mm -hmm. we don't know what the resources are going to be at Virginia Tech in two, three, four years, dependent on if there is conference realignment or mm -hmm. not. Um, and to that effect, I cannot blame Kenny for leaving. I am bummed about comments about, um, you know, the ACC not being the top basketball that was a bummer. conference. That was a bummer. But also, you know, he had a top 10 recruiting class coming in next yeah. year too, which is just, you know – there was still an opportunity to go in an upward trajectory. Um, and we will never really get that to come to fruition here. So we're bummed. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about something that we're bummed about, but my entire point is that we can affect this. Um, now, some people are going to get really angry when I make the comparison I'm going to make uh, on this segment, but I, I do think so. That so we're moving on. We're, we're moving, moving on. Closing the book basketball. on women's basketball. Men's basketball. So in a 72-hour period, I, I'll remember with the first, when the first commit, uh, when the first uh, portal guy came in, I was on a walk uh, in the morning. And basically in a 72-hour window, Sean Padula, Tyler Nickel, MJ Collins, Melijah Poteet, Lynn Kidd, and John Camden all enter the portal. People are freaking out. I'm freaking out. You're freaking out. Everybody's freaking out. Uh, how does it shake out? Lynn Kidd goes to Miami for an unbelievable amount of money that is reported. So he's on the ACC tour, Clemson, Virginia Tech, uh, and now Miami. And again, I'm never going to hold it against a kid. Like, do, do what is ultimately best for you. Um, it is on fortunate that the rules in college are the way that they are. Uh, I don't know how, and this is not a Lynn thing. I don't want this to come off as me coming at Lynn. This is college sports in general. I don't think it's great for kids to be going to three or four or five different schools in general. Um, but I'm wishing him all the best at his time in Miami. Um, Sean Padula is open to coming back. He's still in the portal. One of my favorite quotes from this entire weekend, Hunter Couture posts on uh, Instagram. He's not your Ligel. He is my, my Ligel. Uh, he decided to come back to Virginia Tech. He is now our Ligel. Um, <laughs> so we're glad to uh, have him back. Uh, not expecting to see John Camden again. Tyler Nickel is up in the air. MJ Collins is up in the air. Sean Padula is up in the air. Um, we're going to see how this shakes out. Here's my point. Um. And I'm saying this because I hope it doesn't go down a similar path. Coach Young right now is in a very similar situation that Justin Fuente was in in 2020. I'm not comparing the two as coaches. I'm not comparing the two as people. I'm not comparing the two careers at all. I'm simply comparing the situation. You cannot have a budget for a Camaro and get pissed off when you show up back at your house and have not a Bugatti. You come back with a Camaro. I think that is where we are right now. I have referenced at nauseum the conversation that we had with John Yetzi years and years and years ago. And that conversation was really kind of centered around some of the shortfallings that Virginia Tech had when it pertained to staff, when it compared to uh, technology, when it you know talked about budget, when it talked about um, you know just some of the resources that Virginia Tech football had at that point. Thank God those have been rectified and we are seeing results. Coach Pry has put his hands on the, uh, his fingerprints on the program and he's ran with it and it's been overall great, but that change had to happen. They had to invest in the program and you are now seeing the benefits of that. I, I stand on it this way. Coach Mike Young is not a good coach. 
He is a great coach. He did not forget how to coach basketball. The game of basketball did not change. The landscape of college athletics has changed. And I hate that we are seeing his reputation tarnished because we are frustrated that we don't have the resources of other programs, whether you want to call it NIL, whether you want to call it uh, facilities, whether you want to call it staffing, whatever you want to call it, there seems to be an issue in that regard. We just interviewed Hunter Couture two weeks ago. We were sitting here. He was sitting there. And for a guy who has been in the program as long as he has, and when you hear about the players talk about Coach Young in the manner that they talk about him, there doesn't seem to be any type of cultural issue going on in Blacksburg at all. So if you want a better program, this is not me telling you to give money. This is not me clamoring for you to give money. I've done that in the past. But if your expectations are going to be at a certain level, the investment has to be at the level that your expectations are at. That is just true. You cannot go on Indeed.com and hire a $5 masseuse and be mad when you didn't get a good massage. That's not how it works. If you want a good massage, you have to pay for a good massage. So Virginia Tech has to make a decision. How good do we want to be at basketball? Are we going to support at that level? That is flat out what it is. I actually, I actually think I, I, I don't usually I think I crushed that, but that is that is just the fact. You cannot have expectations that are not aligned with the investment and get upset. That's just that's just reality. This transfer portal stuff is stupid as hell. <laughs> as a fan, I, this is as a fan. As a fan, this is absolutely ridiculous. College sports. Well, the ratings I sound like Josh Payton. Well, the ratings are awesome. More people are tuning in and the money is flowing in. Well, yeah. Um the the parody in college athletics is is going down the tubes uh, over the next few years if something doesn't happen. Now, granted. You watch NC State and DJ Burns make a Final Four run, and you say, "What are you, what are you talking about?" Yeah, and that I don't really know. Um, I know nothing about NC State's NIL or facilities. I, I think this this conversation, in my opinion, begins and ultimately will end with, "What are your expectations? What is the investment in that?" That's it. Like. If your conclusion for Virginia Tech men's basketball is not winning enough games, is Coach Young is a bad coach, I don't think you know ball. I think one of the biggest things here is education about the NIL market and how ridiculous it's gotten. Now, first of all, it was reported that Lynn Kidd is getting north of $500,000 to play at Miami. First of all, congrats. That's awesome. <laughs> if, I, if I'm Lynn Kidd... And someone says, hey, I'm with Coach Laranaga. Um, how does Coral Gables and South Beach sound next year? We're going to give you $500,000. Allegedly. I'm buying the Bugatti. <laughs> I'm buying the Bugatti. And I'm going to enjoy yeah. my uh, senior year, junior year. I have no, COVID I have, year. I have no it's, idea. It's hard to keep up. COVID years are still... Uh, still intact here. DJ Burns started college in 2018 at Tennessee. Um, so yeah. Um, first of all, it's a bummer that we even know this information. That you know, this uh, alleged allegation of Lynn Kid getting this much money is public. But why is it unfair? It's completely, in my opinion, disrespectful of the kid, disrespectful of the programs, and vilifies the entire process. I have so many problems with on threes reporting and some of the reporting that comes out surrounding the transfer portal because it's really not anybody's business how much money anybody is making. Unless you work for a state entity or you work for a public university or anything along those lines, we really shouldn't know how much these kids make. Um, number one, were student athletes taken advantage of in the past? Yes. Number two, does that mean that now we should know how much all of them make? No. Um, I don't I don't really think that's that's debatable. Um, I think the common theme here that is so frustrating. And again, I'm not looking to take this away. I'm glad that college athletes are doing what any of you would do in this situation. It is just the word 
name, image, and likeness is not what happens. It's not it for 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 most of these uh, most of these situations. Where is the Nike deal? Where is the Ford deal? <laughs> Where is the Papa John's deal? No, it's just hey, call up your twenty to thirty richest donors. How much money can you put? On that line, I want you to write me a check to finance our roster. We're going to pay them a salary, and then that's just how this is going to work. That's not NIL. No. And look, we both uh, – we haven't really dove into kind of our professions, but we we work very closely with NIL. We've done uh, – obviously work at Virginia Tech and um, work in the overall industry. We're having one of the lawyers from our company come on and talk about it. And, you know, there is a distinct – difference between when nil is working and nil is happening this is an entire podcast it truly is uh it's just uh, I'll, I'll leave with this my dad called me um a couple weeks ago and he made a really good point he says i see the numbers that are thrown around for some of these teams and some of their rosters and it just leads me to believe how many nfl players do you see on commercials uh in your day-to-day five Maybe six. Uh, the Watt brothers, Tom Mahomes. Brady, uh, Jake from State Farm might as well be an NFL player at yeah. this point, um, considering he's in so many commercials. Kelsey, mm-hmm. uh, Jason, and Travis. Um, like that's pretty much it. The, the Mannings. The fact the Mannings are not even in the NFL. The fact the fact that that there is to be believed that there is X amount of dollars on every single roster in the spirit of name image and likeness is cover your kids ears a load of horse shit and that's what's happening in college athletics and i think coach young to bring this all back unfortunately his reputation and standing as a coach is under attack because of the changes in college athletics and look it is completely fair of you and understandable and quite frankly predictable for you know the retort to be well he's needs he needs to adjust he needs to be better i get it um but everybody isn't getting better and adjusting in the same environment they're not um so and in nil where if you have a coach whose biggest strength is getting the most out of his players mm-hmm. and developing his players you are never in this era going to see something like hunter couture ever happen again because hunter couture is like a Frank Beamer yeah. where Hunter Couture could have hit the portal at any point over his career and probably, you know, been off. If, if Hunter Couture was, was had another year of eligibility, he would have some great offers out of the portal. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it's such a, such a bummer that this is happening. And it's, and it's a bummer too, that, that here we are. And, you know, I'm as conscious of this as probably the listener is it's a, it's a bummer that we're here talking about a, a, a 22 year old kid and how much money he made and where he decided to transfer to school or allegedly made whatever the situation is it's it's on the internet so it it just it, it's it's not good and it has to change and for those of you saying well you know the best will figure it out it drove Nick Saban to retire I don't I don't really know what else what else you need what other evidence you need that this is completely broken and needs to be figured out and a lot of that sits at the feet of the government and um, the NCAA, two of the most reliable uh, institutions in this in this great country yeah. and great land. Yeah, so, very, very awesome. I don't think uh, – uh, let's do this uh, before we talk about some good news. So actually, this is, <laughs> this is, this is my shorts book. Um, we have uh, revitalized – or not revitalized. It's been crushing ever since we really focused on it. But – uh, we've been spending some time posting some some shorts uh, inspired by Bill Simmons. And uh, to wrap up and put the bow on March sadness, uh, we're going to go down hashtag memory lane on some of the losses since COVID in football, um, just to you know close the book on sadness here. So I'm going in chronological order, and then at the end we'll just. Why are we doing? <laughs> because we're, it's 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 subject relevant, and I got I got I got to plug the YouTube shorts. I was going to say kind of the content. You're, like, you're like, hey, look, I I put all these words. Look at how smudged it is. It, it was this. it was. Did you cry? Were you crying when you wrote this? Yeah. Look at. <laughs> I mean, what what is this? It so I was reading them in the snow, and then I went like this. <laughs> I went like this, and it smudged. I you thought it was over your arm. Yeah. So here we go. Since COVID, 
2020, we lost to Wake Forest 23 to 16. Here are the, here are the crazy stats. Um, we went into that game three and one with a crazy loss to UNC. We had three turnovers and lost, even though we outgained Wake Forest 433 to 316. We that lost four of the next. Six. That was awful. So I had. <laughs> I attended three games during the COVID season. Uh, two were in North what Carolina. What a flex! That was a flex. You th- that was a little bit of a flex, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so you you wanted to use, yeah yeah. Well, it's Check not the momentum, it's not a, it's not a flex when you go zero and three in those yeah. games. But um, yeah, the Wake Forest game with Dave Nouse and Rieger, and uh, that was a disaster. Uh, the white guy from um, Centerville High School. Uh, Westfield, Westfield High School, the white safety number Tyler five. Matheny, dude. Uh, Nick Anderson. Mm-hmm. No, his name's Nick oh. Anderson. Tyler Matheny played for our team. Oh, okay. um, also a hero from that season. He is. But uh, that was a horrible game because um, we were rolling. We were. We were. I was at a wedding in uh, – No fall weddings. I think it was in Memphis. Um, Liberty 2020. Lose the game 35-38. to 38. You had a 59-yard field goal blocked and returned for a touchdown. The game is literally over. We won. Beamer ball hang the banner um but no we had called timeout uh liberty lines back up kicks the game winning field goal the fat kicker guy uh he goes nails it and then we lost our next three games one of here's a stat that is one of four losses that year with 415 plus yards of offense i was having a career round on the golf course that day playing new jersey national with my dad and uh, I think Tavion Robinson muffed a punt on uh, in the fourth quarter, and I was on 18, and I got like a triple bogey on 18. Is that where you bought the NJN hat that you wear all the time? Yeah. Syracuse, 2021. This is this 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 was this was my worst one. I, I hated this. Um, first of all, stadium filled with Fire Fuente chants. Uh, everybody was upset. Uh, more we, tears on the uh, yeah, no yeah, more tears on the Ray. We were outscored 21 to 10 in the fourth quarter. And Gareth Schrader, who somehow still plays football for Syracuse, uh, I think his last year was this past year, 45 yard game winner with 19 seconds left. And Syracuse was four for four on fourth down. We were at that game. Yeah. Next. Packy Naughton, Chris Monaco. Good yeah. times. Yeah. Not Pittsburgh 2022. 326 yards rushing for Pittsburgh, six rushing touchdowns. They averaged 7.6 yards per carry. We were outscored 28 to 13 in the second half, and it was the third loss of a seven-game losing streak. Israel Abanaconda. Mm-hmm. Day before my brother ran the Chicago Marathon. Wow. Watched that at the, in the Rooney's basement. Wow. Tough. We were up at halftime. Number five, I just have September 2023. Purdue Rutgers Marshall. I mean, we were talking about March was like getting punched in the face. Like my September sp- September 2023 up until the Pittsburgh game was a colonoscopy. Like wake me up when September ends would have been the Spotify wrapped song of the month uh, for that. But Virginia Tech goes on to uh, win six of the next nine. And then we got off. Uh, and then literally, literally <laughs> nobody wanted to see us unless you were Louisville. Um, so notable i mean there are some there are some serious honorable mentions there you can talk about uh notre dame in 2021 that was just terrible um you can the, talk about the the pinstripe bowl i was, and how that was, I was actually like, literally about to really say upsetting. is that fair though like here's my take we knew it, we weren't gonna we, win that uh, well i don't know when we were at stands and i had had a couple blue yummies <laughs> it's like I was like, I don't want to be Maryland. I wouldn't want to play our backup backups. I couldn't even see the field. No, it was baseball or football games at Yankee Stadium. Do not recommend. I also, I don't think anybody has, like, I don't know if anybody that attended that game purposely went back and watched the broadcast. But when we finished watching the game in person, it seems like the broadcast was then also terrible. Because, like, in the middle of the Pry interview, they had, like, a (laughs) 58-yard touchdown. And uh, just bad all around. Uh, the pit, didn't Jaden pay you to have a good game? Didn't he make like a nice catch? I don't. We had Todd I, Bullock. Did he have a good game or did he have a nice catch? <laughs> <I know. laughs> like, um, that was tough. I, I also had problem picking between Pittsburgh 2022 and Pittsburgh 2020. <laughs> Pittsburgh 2020 was bad. We lost like 55 to 17. Pittsburgh 2021 was awful. Also, I'm glad we got him back. Any other ones? Uh, what is the angriest you ever were leaving a football game? 
Uh, so this is since COVID? No, let's just go ever. Angriest I've ever been. So while you think about it, I'm going to say I have never seen anyone angrier than Sam Jesse after NC State oh in, 2000, in 2022. <laughs> I, I like that is one of the angriest I've ever seen a human being uh, it, literally in my life. Um, but uh, you were furious after Notre Dame 2019. Notre Dame 2019 really did some damage <laughs> to me and some of my personal property. <laughs> Um, I, it might, it might be that, uh, I think I was emotionally wrecked after losing to Duke in 2013. Uh, we wore oh, orange. Dude, Kendall, didn't Kendall, Kendall have like three turnovers by himself? He, he picked off three passes. <laughs> it was awesome. Wait, I'll never, I'll never like, forget That's this. my classmate. <laughs> I was playing basketball in my driveway with all of my high school buddies. And I didn't really like, I was committed to tech, but I wasn't like what I wasn't. A, I was obviously your your fandom's different when so you're in high school. Billy and Ray school. in 2013 was not a son of. I, <laughs> no, I wasn't. And I remember coming in, and my my pops was just like, he's got a lip in, he's on the couch, and he's like, "You guys, that Fuller guy's unbelievable, but you just lost to Duke at home, and you forced three turnovers. What the hell is up with that? <laughs> I'll never forget that." He was he was furious. He was, I was he was angry. I was really upset. I, I don't even think I was mad. I think I was really upset. There's a difference between being mad and being sad. Mm-hmm. I was sad when Virginia Tech women's basketball lost to Baylor. I was I was mad when we lost to Liberty. I was that was a bad day. I think I would have to go back on Twitter and just see like, do I have any like rage <laughs> rage tweets? But I don't think I do. I don't know. That that's a topic for another episode. Yeah, I think that was fun though. Wasn't that a fun trip down memory lane? I, yeah. It was obviously sad, but it was good content. Yeah. Um, <laughs> want to wrap this up? Speaking of football, <laughs> recruiting is yeah. awesome right now. Um, as of last week, last week didn't actually suck that bad. It sucked pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was horrible. <laughs> it was but <laughs> our guy Brett, 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 Brett Clatterbaugh. From Eastern View High School, Culpeper, Virginia, four-star linebacker. Let's go. We got Gabe Williams. We got Brett Clatterbaugh. I mean, Kelly Lawson Kelly is Lawson. on the roster. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's go. 6'2", 230. Uh, he's also a heavyweight wrestling champion from last month. I like that. His commitment video rocked. He had a uh, truck driving through mm-hmm. you know through the roads back roads of Culpeper with he a did, DT flag he, he did have the new logo it did, it, if it, i could just nitpick for a it second it was the new logo um but you know you are not perfect either no really right at all Nicole. at all um really good name brett clatterball the guy you want lining up in the middle there it you know what it does sound like it sounds like a guy that pays for penn state it does. It sound sounds like, a like such a Penn State linebacker. It does. You just hear Gus Johnson, Brad Clatterbaugh, Penn State came in from Culpepper. The kid's a baller. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Selects Virginia Tech over Penn State, Georgia, Dude. Clemson, <laughs> Notre Dame, and four. Highest ranked recruit in the 2025 class thus far. Ooh. He's the fifth recruit in the class. Uh, number eight in Virginia on the composite rankings. Wow. Uh, ranked, you know, if, if you really love the details, she's a 0. .902. And uh, of this class, four or five, I, I would show you my foot, but I, I don't want to reach it above the table, and I'm wearing shoes, the footprint. <laughs> I had, no, I, I had no idea what you were talking about. I went on a hike this morning, and uh, it was in the snow. was leaving footprints behind. And I was like, hey, didn't cry. There you go. <laughs> um, so exciting. Uh, yeah. Kel- Keldon Ryan is the only non-Virginia recruit in this class so far. Hashtag Texas to VT. TX to VT. Any thoughts on that? Are, are we no, I'm, I'm fired up. It's just – and and it, you look, you're probably catching me at a bad time with with everything going on. I th- I think it's just so. A guy signs, and uh, you know what? When I get excited about it, I'll hear somebody else go, "Well, who knows if he even finishes?" Well, time. you know, he's yeah. gonna hit the portal after <laughs> his sophomore year. But we're not saying that's gonna happen. It's just we need to figure this college get this college athletics thing out. It, it's really 
it, it is not good for anybody uh, ultimately. So um, I really hope, uh, really hope we can figure it out. Um, before we go to, before we go to letters from the lunch pail, I put this tweet out um, last week or uh, yeah, last week because today's Sunday. And the question was, what is your favorite Sons of Saturday interview ever? Now, I've been going through the process of making the website change and I had to go through and uh, I basically had to recategorize like 600 podcasts. Um, and uh, I'm not asking you for your favorite because we don't want to we don't want to discriminate here. But what is one that you really enjoyed? I mean, I said it. I said the David Wilson episode. <laughs> it was like crazy. So a couple of the ones that we got, uh, Christopher Shutt. He says, it's honestly still the one with Kelly Gramlich. That was one of my favorite interviews ever. She I, I really, really, really enjoyed that. Um, Frank Beamer was the image that we used. Hokey Hack uh, actually said Jackson Lee Mitchell. Uh, he was really fired up about that. Uh, I heard about it in three separate group chats. Um, so so we will be bringing Jackson back. You can't miss that one this time. Um, I don't know. I mean, my favorite interview... <sighs> A lot of oh, me. well, it was in person. Okay, does that make it worse? <laughs> they smell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, if you guys were there, you know. But I sat down with Hunter. Couture. Oh, I sat down the with Lost Hunter, Files. I, I sat down with Hunter Couture and Justin Mutz uh, the night before we played Boston College oh. in 2022, and uh, that was the hardest I've ever laughed during an interview. I mean, we had impersonations. We, I can't believe. That doesn't exist. I know. Lost footage. Um, but that was a hilarious time. That was a great time. I mean, the, the I got to tell you, Lifetime Achievement, like some of the Lifetime Achievement Award, like interviews that have been done. I mean, Miss America has been on Sons of Saturday. That is a thing that happened. Uh, Homer Hickam. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> if you don't believe it. <laughs> Homer Hickam was on this show. I mean, just an absolute legend. <laughs> Like you get Jake, you get Jake Gyllenhaal to play you in a movie. Like <laughs> I don't really know what else to tell you. Chris, if you're, Chris Long, how great was Chris Long? Oh, Chris Long was Chris, so funny. Chris Long, you are my favorite. Who? Chris Long. <laughs> I, was, was, I was nervous that whole interview. I was like, dude, I had Chris a, Long is on our podcast. I had a very bad haircut, kind of like I do right now. Um, my hair was like really long. I know. Mine was like For Chris Long. Mine was like I, I looked like Jarhead. Um, that was a really good one. I'm trying to end on a positive because we've gone for 60 minutes, but this is bringing me some joy. I mean, Bruce Arians was literally on this podcast. That is also a thing that happened. Bruce Arians joined the podcast like six days before the Super Bowl. That he that also he won. won. That he won. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this might be helpful for some people that have never have never ventured back. Like we hit, I think COVID honestly set such a tone. I am not making a case for COVID. It is well documented how much fun I had during COVID living in fantasy land. But as far as Sons of Saturday is concerned, I think people had literally nothing to do. And then they would march down to their kitchen and be like, yo, we're jumping on with, with these two you know, weirdos on their podcast. Little do they know, the podcast is now a hit. <laughs> um, so any, any other ones? Any last, uh, last submissions here? Uh, Bud's always good on the pod. Mm -hmm. Love having Coach Pry on a few times. Those have been fun. One of the funniest. Mike Young, when Mike Young showed up to the podcast wearing wearing, wearing pre video, cold. dude, pre video. It's not on video. Oh, it was on a Zoom video. Dude. He's like, he's wearing his cold yeah. drinks, waiting hat. On uh, first one of my funniest quotes that you said on uh on a podcast. I don't know why it sticks out. We had Sammy Hill on. And we were reading her accomplishments. We were big on like, we're going to read every accomplishment that our guest had. And I was like, she was first team, all ACC academic, team, uh, academic. And you just go, smarty pants, smarty pants, smarty pants. Wait, that, that was me? Yeah. Uh, maybe it was me. I, don't I remember. think it was oh, you. Oh, it, it, was, it was definitely not me. Um, Got to say it. Liz, Georgia, and Kenny, great interviews. Fantastic, fantastic interviews. Uh, Wit's been on the podcast. Um, I feel like we're just listing people now. And any last one, last one that sticks out as one of your favorites. Um, I got one I'm in my back to think pocket. Of Dax, Dax was great. Dax Lo was always push lower mentality. <laughs> Go ahead with yours. 
Donna were to like rocked. Yeah. Like Donna was so awesome. Uh, and she's so kind and so friendly. And, and I feel like she, I, I feel like she's on a podcast every day. Um, but yeah, shout out to speak advertising. Um, she John was Boyer. Oh my gosh. The plat Avenger. Are you kidding me? What a run. And it's you not got, over. Hey, if you guys have anyone that you want to recommend. Yeah. You know where to find us. Who are, Ooh, what if we put out our wish list? What if you could, what if you could put it out right now that you're like, Put us in touch with so-and-so. We want to interview so-and-so. Hoda. We want the Hoda interview. I know. I the, know. Hoda, the Hoda interview is like the white whale. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go back and forth. Okay. I'm going to go with Cody Grimm. I feel like we can do that. Uh, we, we totally can. I'm just saying that, that is, yeah. that's, my, that's my submission. Okay. Next. Michael Vick. Uh, <laughs> good pick. Good pick. Um. Oh, if I could interview anybody, I, I mean, John Rothstein. Let's go big or go home. Okay. John Rothstein would be literally epic. Rothstein would rock. Mm -hmm. um, Josh Pate would be fun. Josh Pate would be literally we could, awesome. We could throw all of our quirky isms at him. Yes, we could. We certainly could. Dip from our Waterman um, spirit chalices. You know, you know I, and I, I'm actually going to make this happen. Uh, we've talked about it a few times. Uh, Mike Gentry. Uh, the founder of oh, yeah. uh, basically weightlifting at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. um, tremendous impact on me, tremendous impact on Virginia Tech in general. I think he would be, and so would Coach Ferg. Basically yeah. anybody that grips a barbell for a living, like let's get them on the pod. Immediate Speaking of impactful Hokies, Jerry Shanae. Oh, Shanae. Hall of Fame him, Coach, please. Hall of Fame him now, if you're <laughs> listening. Hall of Fame him now. Dude, K, K Finn is pedal to the metal on his way to uh, wherever his office is. Yes! <laughs> um, K Finn was a good interview. K Finn was a great interview. Um, I really think, and, and obviously, I, I, I would love to do some rendition of what Bill Simmons does with uh, his daughter, Zoe Simmons. You should bring Kath on and talk about fashion tips. Like, hey, Kath, what's going on in pop culture? That would like, be kind of fun. I think that would be fun. We would need her, her to buy in, you know. Which you'd have to lean in 100%. Mm -hmm. um, I really would like to bring life advice back, uh, but that just got no, <laughs> just zero. Oh, speak, wait, I want to interview Rosillo. Um, I think that's it because we could just keep going. We're, we're going to just continue this conversation on the couch. Uh, do you want to um, – that sounded really fruity. Um, <laughs> do you want to do the letter from lunch, Bill? We got one letter from the lunch pail. Uh, this was actually a first time submission from oh. uh, at Alexa girl 57. And is that a, says, tongue, is that a tongue emoji in her at? She says in all caps with a few spaces in between her words, nudes in bio. Elon, we got, <laughs> we got to figure this out. We got to figure this out. I don't know where they came from. It is. Okay, all right. All right. First of all, that has to stop. First of all, if you don't have Twitter, you're like, what are they doing? Yeah, yeah. About? On Twitter, essentially, now, ever since they monetize replies, um, we have sex bots. Uh, I, I really have no other. Term. <laughs> you were I, really struggling I, I, to come I, out with I, that. I had, I had no other term. Uh, basically, that is going on in the replies. And one of the other unintended consequences are. I'm I'm really bummed out that the replies section for tweets is no longer about it. Like you'll see a tweet and it's like and, this, add. and it's like it's like Terrell Owens highlights 2004 and you're like let me go in the replies maybe there's some more and then it's like how to build a house with mud. Um did you know that this guy murdered 10 people in 2007? It's not Terrell Owens, it's just some random dude who has nothing to do with it. That just it drives me a driving up a wall check out this orange crush <laughs> recipe yep, I, and it's, I, I and like it's me on the ski lift <laughs> juggling oranges and you're like where did this come from um this was we can't go this long without potting like that was that that was honestly was the subject matter fun no did we have fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh as always hit us with a like wait time out oh i'm asking you Come to spring game. I, we didn't even talk about spring game. We just talked about the events going on. Yeah, we're also doing a uh, tots twelve fifteen. Pete B, mm -hmm. as always, grinding. Uh, set us up yeah. with. Um, I think Dan Treadmill Horse Boundary Corner. 
Um, it's gonna be too epic. deep, obviously. We're going to do some content roundtable stuff at Tots at 12.15 on the day of the spring game. I'm pretty sure uh, – I can't leave Hokey Dan out. Hokey Dan I said Dan. Oh, okay. My bad. My bad. Come on, my man. Bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. My bad. Um, spring game is the best weekend at Virginia Tech. Can you can you change my I, mind? This, this deserves a this deserves a minute. We're back. No, the spring game deserves a minute. We're back. Like like like, in terms of everybody's happy, you literally can't lose. The weather is awesome almost every time recently, um, and just the overall event that they have turned spring game into with people the golf gonna, tournament people are gonna freak out on you Me? if it rains that's fine um i'm probably bigger than the people freaking out they can't only get so mad um but it is such an awesome weekend from what the school puts into it from the fanfare surrounding it i was wrong when i said that the spring game doesn't matter i don't say i'm wrong tons of accountability i was wrong I was 100% wrong. That was a stupid take then. Is a stupid take now. It is tremendously important for the school. And I love it. I look forward to it every year. I mean, the bars aren't crowded. The lines aren't long. Why do you think that is? Because there's not as many people in town. You, you're, yeah, you, you, got, you got two-thirds of the stadium yeah. instead of the full stadium. And, you know, um, it's just a great time. It is. You know, people are just happy. People are excited to see each other mm-hmm. again. Hey, Tammy, haven't seen you since the NC State game. How are you? How was Thanksgiving, Christmas, Groundhog Day, and Easter? Easter? Yeah. Maybe her birthday? You know, I don't know. How was New Year's Eve? Yeah. We saw Griffin and Maddie get married on New Year's Eve. Hey, have you been seeing this nudes and bio stuff? All right. That is a podcast. Thank you guys so much. If you're still here, you're probably a super fan. So please head over to... Tons of Saturday. <laughs> com and get your spring jam tickets. I do have a scheduled tweet going out at 12.01 p.m. Mountain Time tomorrow promoting the Roback shirts. So if you want to hurry up and get it before anyone else does do it. But um, I hate, Pat, hated the whisper thing. I know. And I don't think anyone likes that. Um, but thank you guys for joining us. Uh, thank you for getting through this therapy session. It was as important for us as it probably was for you. Wedding week. For Bell Brewer and Ryan Hartman, see you guys in the Star City on Saturday. Oh, 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 oh.